بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Today is going to be the last session uh, pertaining to the hereafter or belief in the hereafter um, and uh, we were listing many points that are included in belief in the hereafter. Today I will have only two points uh, to touch upon regarding this issue. The first point is that the hereafter uh, is, an in, is an eternal life, whether it is for those who are going to be in Jannah, we ask Allah to make us amongst them, or for those whom Allah Azza wa Jal will be punishing in the fire of hell, Iyadun Billah. And this entails that death itself should disappear. And this is exactly what will happen. After the uh, inhabitants of fire take their places, and those of Jannah take their places, and this happens after the believers who were punished due to their sins, and because they were not cleansed by means of trials they went through in dunya, the punishment in the grave, the punishment and suffering in the gathering and the hereafter, and eventually ended up in the fire of hell. After these believers are taken out of Jahannam and take their places in Jannah, this, is, uh, this will take place. This event of uh, death, putting an end to death will take place. In the books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, telling us about what's going to happen in the hereafter. He said, on the Day of Judgment, the death will be brought in the shape of a ramp that's black and white, and it's more white than black. And a call will be made to the people of Jannah. It will, be said, it will say, all people of Jannah. So they extend their necks and look out to see what's, what's being called for. And then it will be said to them about death in the form of that ram. Do you recognize this? Do you know what this is? They will say, haven't seen it and recognize it, recognized it and experienced death. <coughs> they will say, yes, we recognize it. It is death. Because Allah Azza wa Jal will make them recognize it after the experience of going through death itself. Then a call will be made to the people of fire and they will be called, O oh, people of fire. So they will extend their necks and look out to see what is being called for. And then they will be asked, do you recognize this? They say, yes, it is death. And they also have experienced it. Allah, and Allah Azza wa Jal make them recognize it. Allah Azza wa Jal will command that ram to be slaughtered. And then the caller will say, O oh, people of Jannah, it is an eternal life with no death. O oh, people of fire, it is an eternal life with no death. And then... The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited the saying of Allah وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ إِذْ قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةِ And warn them, O Muhammad, of the day of regret, the day of remorse, the day of sorrow and suffering. Warn them of that day when the matter will be settled and yet they are in a state of heedlessness in this worldly life. I want you to, to uh, pay attention to one thing. Initially, this Quran was revealed upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressing the companions. And then it was conveyed down until it reached us. But this speech was addressing the companions. Allah is saying, you are heedless. You're in a state of heedlessness. You're not mindful of death. You're not mindful of the hereafter. 
And when you reach that, you will realize that it is an eternal life. Whether it is a blissful one in Jannah, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us enter Jannah without prior reckoning or punishment. Or for those who end up as disbelievers or hypocrites who end up in fire, Iyadan Billah, and that will also be eternal. Ibn al Qayyim, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, said, This ram and the slaughtering of the ram, the killing of the ram, which will take place after both parties will be called, Allah Azza wa Jal will command that ram to be slaughtered. So he said, This scene of a ram being slaughtered. And both parties, the people of Jannah and the people of, of Jahannam, both seeing this happen before their own eyes is a reality. And it's not an imagination or a metaphor. The second and last point is talking about the basin or the fountain of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was granted by Allah Azza wa Jal a fountain or a, a basin that has two channels pouring into it from the river of Al-Kawthar. As Allah Azza wa Jal told him in uh, Al-Quran, إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَاكَ Al-Kawthar. We have given you Al-Kawthar. And this is what Al-Kawthar is. It's a river that pours into the fountain of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described this fountain or basin as in the book of an Imam al-Bukhari, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, my hawd, it is called hawd in Arabic, my fountain or my basin requires a month's journey in order to be able to go around it. He said, it's, white, it's water is wider than milk and in another narration is wider than silver and its scent is nicer than musk. And the number of drinking jugs on that fountain is as many as the stars in the heavens. And whoever drinks from it will never become thirsty after it. In the book of Al Imam Muslim, another version, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The width and the length of my fountain are identical, and its water is sweeter than honey. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst those who will drink from the fountain of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma Ameen. If you recollect brothers and sisters, when we spoke about the uh, implications or what is included in belief uh, in the hereafter, we said that one of the points was to believe that people will actually be punished in the grave. And this was one of the implications of believing in the hereafter. To believe that in the grave, it's either a blissful life or punishment. And punishment is not only for the disbelievers or the hypocrites, it also goes on and befalls the believers who have sinned and were not cleansed enough in life by means of trials and difficulties. So, it is very important for us believers to know what makes a person, a Muslim, deserving of the punishment in the grave, so that we can avoid such matters. There are many that were mentioned in uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. I've picked few of them. In the book of an Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us that uh, backbiting and tail-bearing, conveying words between people to create enmity between people, is one of the deeds that make a person deserving of the punishment of Allah azza wa jal. And if this was uh, or included lying, then the sin is graver than just normal conveying true stories, true words. X said something, so you go and convey it to Y. You are, you are actually conveying a correct, true sentence that was said. That is haram in itself. 
if, if you're doing it to create enmity, and if you're lying, then that adds to the sin, another sin, which is the sin of lying. Also in the book of Al-Bukhari, the Prophet Sallallahu informed us that not purifying oneself from, after relieving themselves from urine, uh, makes a person deserving of the punishment of the grave because this is a ritual purification. You're, you're supposed to cleanse yourself, purify yourself after you relieve yourself. Now, I want you to pay attention to one important point here. This is because it is an, an obligation to purify, ritually purify yourself before performing salah. And if you don't cleanse yourself after relieving yourself, then your, your prayer is not going to be accepted because you're praying, simply praying without wudu. And it's one of the conditions of, uh, or preconditions of salah. How is the case, or how would the punishment be for those who don't pray to start with? Who are negligent about their prayers? Taib. Al-Bukhari said, or reported, that the Prophet وسلم, said that lying, and then he described the type of lie he is talking about that makes a person, he or she, deserving of the punishment in the grave. He said a person makes a lie, or says a lie, makes up something, or says something that's a lie, and then it spreads in the horizon. Does this remind you with anything? Does this remind you with social media, for example? And how fast a message can be spread, can, can reach millions of people just like that. And here I must remind myself and the brothers and the sisters to be very careful before forwarding or copy-pasting the message and sending it to different groups and they will forward it or copy and paste it to different groups and so on until you ascertain authenticity of what you are conveying or forwarding, then don't do that. If it is something that's not beneficial, there is no benefit resulting from it, don't do that. Okay, Al-Bukhari also. Those who commit adultery, males or females, will be deserving of the punishment in the grave. Those, also Al-Bukhari, those who consume or deal with riba, interest base transactions, that is haram, and this includes banks or having money in banks that are interest-based. And this includes the person who actually consumes the riba, the person who gives the riba, or who records, whether it is online or soft copy or hard copy, and those who are witnesses to that. All of these people are included in that threat or warning of punishment in the grave. In the book of Al-Bukhari as well, abandoning the acting upon the Qur'an and deserting it. Now, deserting the Qur'an can mean deserting its memorization, its recitation, its understanding, acting upon it or referring to it for judgment. Some said it also includes those who memorize and neglect it enough to forget it. All of that is included. We ask Allah's protection. To sleep through the salah, and this is also in Bukhari, or delaying it until its prescribed time ends. Now, this 
brings to mind brothers and sisters who sit on WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, watch YouTube, TikTok, what have you. All of these matters eat up your time without you realizing it. You open a, you receive a, a YouTube clip, for example. You open it in YouTube, or you'll be looking for something on YouTube. And you open the clip, and then the suggested list leads you to another, and when you open the other, it gives you another suggested list, and you go in from one to the other, one to the other, one to the other, and your time is gone. We ruin our lives by going through a vicious cycle of wasting or killing time. Now this in itself is bad, but when it results in one neglecting salah, then the punishment of grave, or the person becomes deserving of punishment in the grave. Another issue that can lead to neglect in salah or delaying it until its prescribed time is, uh, has finished is housework. A sister uh, becomes busy doing this or that at home or talking to a friend, uh, chatting, watching, whatever, and then she realizes that kids are due in a short period due back from, from school, or her husband is about to return from work. And she starts cleaning or cooking and not paying attention to time. And before she knows it, Salat al-Dhuhr or Salat al-Asr is gone. And in places in the world where the times are very close, there's not a large or a long, uh, rather, uh, there's not a long gap between the, 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 the different salawat, this can happen very fast without you realizing it. Another matter that makes a person deserving of the punishment in the grave is being arrogant and proud. And this is also in Bukhari. Especially when one walks with proud, with pride, or men who draw their clothes be, be beyond uh, the, uh, the heels, or rather the ankles. They draw their dress, their, their trousers, pounds, uh, their thobe that is, beyond that point. That becomes deserving of the punishment of the grief. Seeing someone being wronged, being oppressed, and you can help him or her, and refraining makes the person who refrains deserving of the punishment in the grave. Al-Qastallani rahmatullahi alayhi said, if this is the case about the person who only sees someone being wronged or oppressed and not helping them, how would the case be with, this, with the person who is actually doing the oppression or wronging others. Now this takes different forms. Don't let your mind go too far. This can happen at home. We can wrong our spouses. Men can wrong their wives, oppress them, mistreat them. Women can mistreat their husbands, oppress, oppressing them in the form of not giving them their rights, neglecting their obligation towards their husbands. Neglecting their, the obligation towards their children, the father and the mother. This is the worst type of oppression anyone can apply against his own children or his own family. So let's be aware of that. The last point I would like to mention is intentionally, without an excuse, an accepted, an Islamically accepted excuse, breaking the fast during Ramadan. Now, this is reported by an nasai and classed as authentic by al Albani. And anyone who breaks the fast during Ramadan without any acceptable, Islamically acceptable justification, illness, traveling, and so on, 
then that person becomes deserving of the punishment in the grave. Now, what are the impacts of believing in the hereafter? How should this reflect or how would this reflect on a person's life or behavior or conduct? Well, number one, whoever believes in the hereafter will realize that life is short regardless of how long you live. 70, 80, 90, 100. Eventually, death will reach you. At your prescribed time, you will go. So the person who believes in the hereafter with what is included in belief in the hereafter, of course, will realize that life is short, so he will not have hope to live a very long life. And thus he will start preparing for that moment. The person will also realize that regardless of how much bliss you can enjoy in life, it eventually will end by death. And therefore, he will realize that the only eternal bliss or joy or happiness one can enjoy is going to happen there. And therefore, he again will start working hard to make himself deserving of the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal that will give him this blissful life. It will make a person fear Allah Azza wa Jal, feel that Allah Azza wa Jal is watching him and will ask him and everything is recorded and he will be asked about every deed he does, every word he says, every look he makes or she in this life. Will make a person continuously or continue to and increase good deeds because he will have the hope that the more he does or she does, the more reward he will gain and the higher his chances are to become deserving of the mercy of Allah. The next point is very important and it touches our lives. Believing in the hereafter and what's included in this belief makes a person persevere through difficulties and hard times and deal with the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal with contentment. Because he is certain one who believes in the hereafter and the matters included in that belief is certain that Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed that. This is number one. Number two, there is no escape from the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. And number three, believing in the hereafter make him realize will make him realize that there is another life in which I will be recompensed for this trial or hardship that I persevered through patiently as I, I was commanded by Allah Azza wa Jal. There was there's another life I will be rewarded for being content about the difficulties a husband whose wife is rebellion. This is a test. It's a very difficult test. But if he reminds himself with the hereafter, he need, and that he needs to be patient with his wife. This is the mother of his children. He loves her. She loves him. They've had a long life together. And so on and so forth. And that Allah Azza wa Jal, we recompense him for this patience in the hereafter. Life becomes sweeter. Likewise, the wife. We men can be aggressive at times. Some men can be rude at times. Persevere through. Patiently. Be content with the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Of course, up to a limit. But this is not the, the, a lecture to discuss marital problems. Another impact... It soothes the heart. It brings tranquility to the heart to believe in the hereafter and the blissful life and the rewards. And 
And when, when you believe in the hereafter, you don't look at what the other people possess. People start envying one another. One will not regret and become feeling sorrow. Oh, I didn't get this. So-and-so got that. She got this. I didn't get this. He got this. I didn't get this. No. You'll, you'll be waiting for what Allah Azza wa has awaiting for you. Has in store for you in the hereafter. And this helps you have this peaceful, tranquil heart in this life. It helps a person refrain from sinning, from fulfilling their desires, because they know that there is another life. Punishment will be for those who give in to their desires, give in to their uh, wishes, sin whenever they want, do this and do that. They will refrain, they will fear Allah Azza wa and His punishment to Him the hereafter. And, uh, work hard on themselves not to fall into matters that will make them deserving of the punishment in the hereafter. It makes life, believing in the hereafter, makes life has a value, gives it a value, gives it a, a, uh, an objective, uh, a mission. Uh, a believer is not just someone who's just living to eat, drink and sleep and, and, get and produce children. That, that's not... We're, we'll be equal to non-believers and to animals for that matter as well. He's focused. When you believe in the hereafter, you become focused. There's an objective. There's a mission. I have a message. I have uh, another life to go to. So let me be focused in this life to make sure when, that when I, when I shift to the other life, I shift having fulfilled the message fulfilled the objective for my creation in this life and thus life will become of value and not just a waste of time it it makes a a, a person or a believer optimistic one who's wronged will realize when believing in the hereafter that allah azza wa jal will give him justice in the hereafter and that person who has wronged him will get his punishment in the hereafter. The one who is deprived, who's poor, he knows that patience in this life will entitle him to the reward. So he becomes optimistic about his own life. He'll be smiling. And this is the difference between a believer whose faith is strong in Allah Azza wa Jal and in the hereafter and deals with the matter in, in this way and those who don't. The one who does will always be content with Allah Azza wa will always be happy with Allah Azza wa Jal. Because though he is going through a certain life who, that's difficult, for example, here, he knows that, okay, there is something else there. So he becomes an optimistic person. Uh, it, it makes a person... Uh, different in his conduct with others. He's kind in his treatment. He fulfills his obligation. He gives people their rights. The, 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 the merchant becomes uh, honest and sincere. Those who uh, are at their uh, job, they do their job uh, correctly, on time. They don't slack off. They don't waste time. Uh, the judge at, uh, at court will be fair with people because he knows otherwise Allah Azza wa Jal will hold him accountable to that. It makes the, the, the person in charge, the guardian, merciful and careful about the, the affairs of those, the subjects under him or those under his guardianship. Makes a person kind to his parents, to his, to his neighbors, to his kinship, to his mother, to his wife, to, his, uh, to her husband, to their children. Makes a person who, who borrows money, pay, pays it off back on time without delaying the repay without going, making the person who has actually, who was kind enough to lend him money, goes through a lot of suffering before he gets his money back, and so on and so forth. It makes a, a, a believer a, a positive element in the community. It makes him productive. It makes him, it motivates him to call people, call others to, to virtue. 
and he himself adhered to that, uh, calls people with a kind word, with softness to the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. It makes a person utilize the means and work hard to leave this life in a state that pleases Allah Azza wa Jal. Because he knows the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is reported by Muslim, that every slave will be resurrected on the state he died. He died, he died in a certain state or upon a state he will be resurrected the same. So believing in that makes the believer work hard and utilize all means to end, to depart this life in a way that's pleasing to Allah Azza wa And it will also make him utilize all means to be firm when he is asked in the grave. To know, to, to act in this life in a way that will enable him to correctly answer the questions in the grave. As believers, we need to be living in a state that's balanced between fear of Allah and hope in Allah. Believing in, uh, in the hereafter makes a person live or lead such a life, a balanced life of fear of Allah, so therefore he refrains from whatever makes him deserving of the punishment or wrath of Allah Azzawajal, and hoping in Allah's mercy and reward, and therefore he acts, works hard to make him or herself deserving of the mercy and the reward of Allah Azzawajal. Last point I would like to uh, mention about the impacts of uh, belief in the hereafter is that it makes the community at large live a peaceful, stable, loving uh, state. People will live in harmony because if every element of or every member of that community acts the way we mentioned, have these impacts on him or her uh, which, resulting, which results from uh, belief in the hereafter, then the community at large will live in peace. The community at large will be at harmony, love and care for one another. Each wishes the best for his or her fellow Muslim. Why? Because each individual in that community will have that balance between fear and hope in Allah. Uh, I would like to conclude with a narration that's uh, very touching and it's something I'm sure everybody who's watching or will watch this has lived it once in their lives. It is in the book of At-Tabarani and classed as sound by Al-Albani. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Jibreel came to me and said, O Muhammad, live for how, however long you want to live, you will die. Meaning, regardless of how long you stay in this life, eventually you will die. And love whomever you want to love, you will eventually depart and leave them. And do whatever you wish to do, you will certainly be held accountable and recompensed for it. And then he said, know, O Muhammad, that the honor of a believer results from him praying the night prayer, al-qiyam, qiyamul layl. And his might and dignity lies in him or her not making themselves in need of people, asking people. Ali radiyallahu anhu and this is reported by Al-Bukhari, said, advising people, and Ali radiallahu anhu had 
beautiful words, very wise words that were reported uh, that he had said, radiallahu anhu. He said, O oh people, indeed this worldly life is departing and the hereafter is approaching. This goes without saying. We're leaving and when we leave then the hereafter has come. So he said, this worldly life is departing and the hereafter is approaching. And each one of these two, the two lives, has its followers, has its children, he said. Meaning, those who work hard for it. There are people who will work hard for this life. And there are people who will work hard for the hereafter. He said, each of these two lives have people who strive hard to be of its followers. He said, so be amongst those who work for the hereafter, the followers of the hereafter, and don't be amongst those who are followers in this, of this worldly life. Then he said, today, there's an opportunity to do deeds, to perform good deeds, and there is no reckoning. You are not held accountable. But tomorrow, meaning in the hereafter, but tomorrow, there will be reckoning without the chance of performing good deeds. Yazid al-Raqqashi is one of the tabi'een. The tabi'een is the generation who did not see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa but saw and lived with the companions radiallahu anhu. And he was known to be a very soft-hearted, devout worshiper who frequently cried whenever he mentioned or was reminded with the hereafter. It was reported that once he was talking to himself, saying, Woe to you, O Yazid! Who will pray on your behalf once you die? Who will fast on your behalf once you die? Who will please your Lord for you or about you with your Lord after you die. And then he would address people and say, Oh people, shouldn't you cry for the rest of your life about yourself, about your conditions? The one who is being chased by death and the grave will be his house. And soil is going to be his mat. And worms will be his companion. And yet, he, is, he will be awaiting or expecting the greatest horror to take place. How should the condition of such a person be? If we reflect upon these three quotes of Yazid Ali and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and try to live our lives according to what messages are being sent from them, our lives will totally change. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst those who hear and act upon the best of what they hear. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst those who believe and apply their faith and act upon what they believe in. Allahumma ameen. With this I conclude. Subhanakallahumma hamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.